Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of the Suited Shootist. And this week we are going to be doing the Suited Shootist Being Basics Stylist. Um, kind of in continuation with the Being Basics series. What I want to touch on are just going to be a couple of basic concepts that you can use in different aspects of your life, whether it be from gun handling, like we covered in the first episode, last week's was cocktail, now I'm getting back into a little bit of the wardrobe management, and one thing that I've gotten feedback on from a lot of folks is not a lot of people are, are in suit and tie jobs anymore, and not a lot of people do that as kind of part of their everyday life. So I don't either, you know, I don't live in a suit and tie, I don't, I'm not a Wall Street bank or anything like that. So all of these things that I talk about apply across the board. And so that's what I really want to focus on today. And what I'm going to be going over are kind of three different categories and levels of wardrobe that I use throughout the course of, you know, a given week. And just to give you some things to think about that you can maybe start playing with and putting into practice. So the first thing that I'm talking about is what I've got on right now. And this is pretty much what you're going to see me running around in if I'm just doing errands on a weekend or, or something like that. Um, I'm filming this on a Saturday morning. And so after I'm done with the filming, I've got some things that I need to get checked off the, the to-do list. And so this is how I tend to run around town. Most folks, dudes especially, have their jean and t-shirt combo that they love. This is basically that. Um, just with a Henley instead of a regular t-shirt. And I'm really fond of chukka boots um, instead of sneakers. They look better, in my opinion. They're incredibly versatile, and they are also supremely comfortable. Um, it's May in Texas right now, so I would be absolutely insane to put on any other layers. But when things start cooling off, this kind of lightweight field jacket is one of my go-to's that I can just slap on over this. And again, it's not stuffy by any stretch. It's not formal, but it's definitely a little bit more put together than just basketball shorts or constructor jeans and a, and a graphic t-shirt. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about whenever you hear me talking about dressing intentionally. So, like I said, it's a simple elevation to go from your typical jeans and a t-shirt to something like this, and yet it gives an impact. So, this is kind of the first level of it. Obviously, for something like this, uh, it's gonna be the easiest in terms of concealment. So, even without the jacket, since it's not really a cover garment, I've got my Glock 19 in my Keeper. I've got my Palm Pepper Spray in my Strong Side Pocket. And then I've got my Phoenix PD35 in my Off Side. So that way everything is accessible. The shirt's long enough that it kind of covers it. So it's not just hanging out there for everybody to see. And for my purposes, at least, I found this to be appropriately discreet. So... Taking a step up from the super casual, which to kind of put it in some relatable terms, I would happily wear that out to a sports bar or, you know, going out to like a barbecue joint with my buddies. If I'm going out to a nice dinner or something like that, if it's a little bit more special occasion or just a little bit nicer, this is generally about what you're going to find me in. I think one of the traps that a lot of folks get caught up in is they assume that if a shirt has a collar and buttons on it, it's automatically formal. That's not the case. One of the articles that I wrote, and I'll link to it down in the description, was about how you can actually use different shirt fabrics to your advantage, specifically when it pertains to concealment. Um, that's more on fabric weights and patterns, but it also kind of gives you a good idea of what's out there. Because something like this, it's more of a chambray style, started out as a work shirt, so it's definitely casual in that regard. Uh, dressing it up with dark denim. Do not try and wear your normal jeans with a vest or a jacket because that is a screaming clue that you don't know what you're doing. Um, again, in Texas, especially when it gets hot, I'm not necessarily dumb enough to wear a jacket in 80 and 90 degree weather. So 
if I want to dress it up a little bit, the vest is a great way to go. In addition, it can also make things a lot easier because Spencer Keepers and Matt Jaquies both have talked about how using the vest can effectively serve as a closed front cover garment. With the bottom button undone, there's enough slack down here that I can get enough clearance to get to my gun, which is here. This is the new Keeper's Cornerstone holster uh, that's tuckable. It's kind of a pain in the ass to set up, so I'll show it to you here before I switch, uh, switch outfits again, but um, I don't want to untuck it and then watch you have me pack it all back in. If I do want to wear a jacket, I personally don't like doing the odd vest and jacket combo. There's some folks out there that it works for. It's not my style personally, but um, something to play around with and see if you like it, especially for where I am in the country. It really just doesn't make sense because uh, it's, it's not cold enough most of the time to justify those kinds of layers. But uh, a sport coat is another nice way to go. I'm also one of these weird people that even though I have kind of a watch fetish, I hate having things around my wrists. So unless I'm wearing a jacket, I almost always roll my sleeves. Now, this is where things can get interesting, uh, and I'm gonna touch a little bit more in depth on a later video about how all this stuff is supposed to work together. But sleeve length on your shirt and on your jacket need to work together in order for it to fit properly. So if I wasn't wearing the vest, this is probably about what I would go with. So again, this is definitely more of kind of a spring summer look. And without the vest, I can still have my same basic holster set up with the Keeper's Cornerstone. It's got the different uh, struts on it, so it allows you to tuck the shirt in over it. One thing that I've found useful is when you are trying to pack this all in, this shirt tail, once you get it behind the struts, unzip your fly and actually pull it down into the struts that way, it makes things a little bit easier. Um, other than that, the pepper spray stays the same. Sometimes I will downsize the light a little bit uh, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the chances of me needing it in this type of circumstance drops a little bit. And also this particular through night, because the pocket clip configuration rides deeper in my pocket than that Phoenix does. And so it's just a little bit more discreet and it's not gonna draw attention. So this is kind of my smart casual. It's still denim, so you're only gonna get so dressy whenever you're working with jeans. I swapped out the boots for a pair of brown lace-ups. One thing, again, for you to play with, a little bit of a pro tip that I like, if the laces are hanging out, tuck them in. Because if they're hanging out like rabbit ears, it can just kind of jack with the look. Not a huge thing, but it's those little details that you can play with to just kind of bump it up to that next level expertise. From here, we're going to take a look at something a little bit more formal without going full-blown suit and tie. Okay, so this is kind of a good example of what I call the kind of the, the business modular. This is something that I would wear. I've worn something like this to job interviews before. Um, if my wife and I are going out to a show, something to that effect. Um, again, special occasion. This is, if you want to get dressed up, but without going full-blown suit and tie, or you just want something in your closet that's gonna give you more flexibility than just a suit and tie, something like this is a good way to go. You'll see that a lot of the colors that I've got tend to pretty much stay the same. Most of my pants, whether they're jeans, slacks, or otherwise, are either blue <laughs> or they're gonna be khaki, some kind of tan, because those are the two kind of most versatile colors. With something like this, it's gonna be slacks and a sport coat. And again, I can wear this with jeans as well, or I can wear them with those chinos. This is the kind of button-up shirt that is gonna be a little bit dressier. One of the big things to notice is when the other one, it was a button-down collar. This one is not. Button-down collars are always, again, very inherently casual. It's another kind of amateur mark. If you're trying to wear a button-down with like a tie, mm kind of looks like you're in grade school. So just a little detail to pay attention to. 
Uh, this is where you can start playing with accessories like pocket squares. I'm going to again get into a little bit more of how to play with colors and patterns on another video. This is another way to either show some flair, for lack of a better term, or really indicate that you're out of your depth. So if you don't know what you're doing, play it safe. When it comes to concealment in something like this, um, it's a little different. When it comes to a light, I'm going much, much smaller. This runs on a single AAA battery. It's still relatively bright. It's going to give me what I need in the environments where I'm wearing this. When it comes to the pepper spray, I've still got one, but again, I'm going with something a lot more streamlined. This is one of the ASP Street Defenders, so it's much lighter weight and it's much lower profile. The gun also changes a little bit. Depending on the circumstance, I'm going to go one of two ways. If I want something that is more readily accessible, I've got a little 32 caliber pocket gun that rides in a Raven pocket shield in one of those Remora style holsters. This is a standalone, works okay. The pocket shield helps number one break it up a little bit more and also keep it in position better. So this is a less optimal caliber, but it's easier to get to. The other option is something that was recommended to me by Todd Green. And um, I'm not just taking my pants off for the sake of it here. What we're looking at is Smart Carry. It's an elasticized band with basically a kangaroo pouch. And I've got a 38 J frame readily there. You can get at it with some practice without having to undo your pants, provided that they're not too snug. It is something that uh, takes a little bit of time to get used to, but since these trousers fit properly, I can get that distance and get this out. So this is one of those circumstances where mission is gonna drive the gear. One thing that I like, and you see me wear throughout the entire video, are these slide belts. This is the same belt that I was wearing in the previous getup, just with a different buckle. Again, to make it a little bit dressier. Um, I've done a write-up on the slide belts that I'm gonna to link to as well. For a non-dedicated gun belt, they seem to work pretty well for me. I know there's a couple of different brands out there. I've only had experience with two, them and Core Essentials that I was less than impressed with. Um, but again, the reason why I'm able to get away with using a regular belt as opposed to a dedicated gun belt is because the pants fit properly enough that it's holding everything against my body to where this is just kind of almost a secondary layer of retention and positioning. So the main point on all of this is not to focus on what I'm wearing because my build, my skin type, my complexion is going to be different than yours. This is again just to give you kind of a template to play with and see what really suits your needs best because once you get the basic tenants down of on the casual side, still going with effectively jeans and a t-shirt, just playing with different t-shirt alternatives and making sure that the jeans fit right. On the casual side, the smart casual, start introducing some collared shirts that uh, are maybe something other than just the, the, the typical polo and seeing what else you can add to it to just bump it up a notch. And then on the dress side, something that is not gonna be as formal as your typical suit and tie, play with some color combinations, see if there's some patterns out there that you like, because once you get a hold of stuff like this and you really start understanding it, it becomes so versatile that it really doesn't require a lot of thought. And that's the idea, is there's enough other supremely important stuff in life that we have to spend a lot of time and effort thinking about that once you get this template down, it's plug and play. You can go in the closet, grab a couple things that you know work together, and it's done. You're not having to sit there and, and kind of anguish over it, or on the other side, not care at all, and then kind of just go about looking like you don't care. So hopefully you found this useful, and if there's any questions, particularly on how I balance the wardrobe and the gear, 
please leave them down in the comments below. I'll include the blog articles that I mentioned as well, and I'll catch you guys next week.